Hello, and welcome back to Astral Doorway. This is Jean, and on this episode, I'd like to share a recent astral projection experience I had, where I found myself in front of who I recognized as a spiritual guide. I don't know whether he was my guide or just someone I happened to stumble across, but regardless, I recognized him as a guide and teacher who was there to assist me. I asked him a question related to my waking life and I received an enlightening answer. Not an intellectual one, but more of an energetic one. And the answer wasn't just a helpful answer, uh, but also afterwards my question seemed to have become a catalyst for a deep recall or remembering of a very hidden memory of when I was a child that I didn't know I had or experienced. So it, this was kind of like remembering a past life, uh, but it was this life. <laughs> it was just a different kind of memory since I must have been at an age where you don't usually retain physical memories in the normal sense. Uh, and what I discovered was really shocking and eye-opening, so I will get into that. Uh, just before I do, I just want to give some shout-outs and say thank you to some new patrons who have joined the Astral Doorway Patreon and Discord community. Samuel, Gordon, Bridget, Jordan, Ryan, Manuel, and Dylan who pledged an even higher amount than the highest pledge I offer. So thank you, and thank you to everyone who is supporting the channel. Uh, the channel is growing very fast in general, and we're only just beginning. So I'm very excited to take you all on this journey with me and all of us having this journey together, and hearing about your experiences and answering your questions. If you'd like to support the channel too, there's a link for the description below. We have two events a month, which consist of deep discussions or Q&As, and they've been really enjoyable and fruitful experiences. Uh, but if not, you know, at least be subscribed as I plan to not just share exciting experiences like this one, but really get to the root of a lot of spiritual and astral topics and inquiries that we all have. It should be a very enlightening journey. So, as I was saying, back to this astral projection experience. I found myself in front of this humble gentleman who appeared to be in his 50s or 60s. He was dressed quite smart. He had a very gentle and warm persona. He was very calm and mindful in his demeanor, and I liked that, and I very much resonated with him. So, you know, perhaps he is a personal guide of mine, who knows? But anyway, being the sort of meditative person I am too, uh, I didn't pester him like most people would when encountering a guide. Uh, I actually just enjoyed being in his presence for a while. Uh, I enjoyed being in this feeling of affinity, like a spiritual brother or even a father figure. There was a kind of bonding that happened while we were walking around for a while. And as many of you know, in the physical, I recently moved to South Korea. But as it usually happens in out-of-body experiences, we often find ourselves back in locations where we are more familiar with or where we feel more at home. It's like our consciousness has a residual energy back in these locations, you could say. And so me and this guide were actually in London city centre. We were specifically in Leicester Square, if any of you know it, and we were in the busy streets of London. It was strange being back in London so vividly, seeing English billboards, red double-decker buses, and black English taxi cabs driving around because, you know, South Korea is just so different. Uh, thinking about it now, it's quite a strange sensation waking back up here in the physical and being on the other side of the world in a very different country. You know, South Korea isn't just 
different in its appearances either. It's culture, the people, and just the general energy field around her feels very different to the UK. Anyway, we were walking around here and we both came to the mutual decision that it was a bit too concrete and it was still fairly busy. So we saw a map nearby and we both decided that we should move along, especially when we saw a map near a tube station. And I pointed out to a green area that we could go to on the outskirts of London. For a moment, I thought we'd have to take the underground tube, but of course not. And so we both flew into the sky. I followed my guide. I didn't really know where I was going or where he was leading me. I just followed him and we were both flying quite joyously covering quite some ground until we landed in this much more peaceful and green area. And we continued walking amongst this very nice and beautiful English countryside with the odd basic concrete pavements and roads here and there. And at one point as we were walking through all this nature, I spotted a puppy and I was going to go and comfort it because I thought it was lost. Uh, but my guide stopped me and pointed to the parent of the puppy along with other puppies. And we watched them play around a bit. Uh, but I'm telling you this because as we did, the experience seemed to be coming to more of a heightened and joyful one as we peacefully watched the family of dogs play around with each other. At this point, as I was watching these puppies play, something shifted in the atmosphere. And at this point, I wasn't sure whether I was in an Earth-like plane or not anymore. Things started to feel more quote-unquote magical or heavenly. Uh, it's a peculiar thing to describe. It's like an aura of enchanted peace imbues the dimension you're in. And lo and behold, as we continued our path, leaving the puppies behind, the path continued on into this beautiful site. And in front of us was this coast with a long majestic bridge akin to something out of elvish architecture out of the Lord of the Rings. And this bridge connected from the land we were on, on the coast, to a beautiful island on the other side. This scene was really something out of a fantasy movie. The bridge had raised sides with beautiful intricate weaved patterns which you could look out of. And as I was appreciating this and we were both stood in the middle of the bridge, I saw on the island on the other side this majestic castle in the distance and there was a backdrop of dark dusky purple sky with stars and shooting stars and beautiful masses of clouds. It was just awe-inspiring to see. If you saw this sight in the physical it would take your breath away. And I saw what looked like angels or masters coming in and out of the castle with light shining inside when the doors opened. Uh, I told my guide we have to go there. <laughs> uh, he agreed. But as we were about to continue our journey, I remembered that I've actually been feeling quite stressed lately in my physical life. And so I thought I'd finally ask him a question. And I asked, how can I be more present and aware during stressful situations in my life, such as starting a new job? Because, you know, that's what I'm going through in this stage of my life, right? The guide seemed to just take in my question rather than have an immediate response. And he just closed his eyes. He never actually said anything. And I was trying to figure out what he was doing at first. But through this kind of bond or connection we had, I understood what he was doing or what he was trying to portray with the mental energy that he was holding or emanating. So after some time of figuring out what he was doing and kind of connecting to the energies that he was 
giving me very wisely, I got the answer myself, which I was very satisfied and happy about. Uh, There was no verbal intellectual answer, but the answer was along the lines of when we no longer resist pain and voluntarily go into or deeply accept our challenges, then we transmute it into joy and grace. Of course, that doesn't really do what I learned justice, but it's just a sort of hint as to the information that I received from him. And I communicated my understanding to him and, you know, gave him a nod of approval and thanks. Now, soon after I learned and understood this lesson, the experience started to shift or transform more deeply into my own personal self. Maybe because I didn't fully understand the answer or what was about to happen was more of an elaboration of what I should understand. And so next, I was no longer on that bridge. And unfortunately, we never got the chance to go to that castle. But what happened next was extraordinary. And I've never felt anything like it in an out-of-body experience. So this is a first for me. And I'm very glad I had this experience and I didn't go to that castle because I definitely learned more and have definitely integrated what I learned next into my physical waking life. Uh, That's definitely brought me a lot more ease and peace. And I'll explain why I feel that peace and sort of enlightenment afterwards. So the next thing I started to experience was that I was remembering a memory that was deep, very deep within my own mind that I somehow forgot or suppressed or just didn't remember. This memory was from when I must have been, I feel like maybe three years old or something like that. You know, maybe I was even one or two, but I guess my belief system is battling with the idea that I really remembered something from that long ago. It's a very strange uh, feeling. So anyway, in this memory that I was recalling in this next experience, I was astral projecting. And not just astral projecting after some efforts or intention, right? I was, as I said, I was a little child. Uh, This was completely natural and normal. And I did it in such a happy and innocent way without knowing what I was doing, like intellectually. I just knew it instinctively. I remember vividly coming out of my body in my childhood bedroom with ease, looking at various tabletops in my room, pushing them over and making a mess in the astral in a very playful way, a very happy, giddy, playful way as children are. And then I would go back to my physical body. I would literally hop or skip to my physical body and merge back with it and wake up then in my physical body, uh, start looking at the objects that were still in the same location. They weren't on the floor anymore from when I pushed them over in the astral. And so I'd get up in my physical body, make a mess in the physical, and then I'd go back to sleep and go and astral project again and make a mess some more and play with some toys, papers and books. And I did all this in a tremendously joyful, excited and playful way, just like children are. I was astral projecting and making a mess and being happy, uh, just like that. Like it was just a normal thing I did. And I remember coming in and out of body at least three or four times, almost instantaneously as well. It was very strange to recall. And yes, this was a very peculiar sensation to experience this memory because on one level, I was the child again, doing all those things. I was back in my childhood bedroom. I was coming in and out of body. But on another level, in another part of my awareness, I was future me. And that observing part of me 
was basically in total surprise of what was happening. It was just in a state of shock, you could call it. I had no words. There was nothing to do but experience this memory. Like I've said to all of you in my very first video on this channel, and what I even wrote in my book very clearly, was that I started astral projecting when I was 18. And I even said in my book, hey everyone, you know, I'm just like you, don't worry. I'm not one of those astral projectors who've been astral projecting since I was a child. <laughs> well, I was totally wrong. But, you know, as a child, I never did it as like a conscious practice or intentional activity. It was just something that was so natural. At an age where I didn't, let's say, you know, develop my own sort of sense of self or ego yet. So in that sense, you know, I still haven't, didn't start consciously and properly astral projecting as a full-fledged adult until I was 18. But still, the fact is, I clearly remember astral projecting as a child very, very easily. Much more easier than I can do now, in fact. I was an astral projection master in those moments. I was clearly experiencing myself astral projecting as a completely innocent and playful child coming in and out of body as if it was no effort or challenge at all. And on top of this, I realized that this was an elaboration of the answer from the question I posed to my guide. And you can see how it connects if you're listening carefully. As a child, I astral projected with complete ease, much easier than I can do now as a beaten up, stressed out adult, right? And so remembering this was also teaching me that I need to bring more joyfulness, non-seriousness, excitement, and playfulness back into my life, rather than feeling like a stereotypical, weary, and run-down adult, right? When I was experiencing this memory, I felt how, as a child, I was much more freed from the dimension of time that I've spoken about so much in my two previous videos. And so there's also quite some synchronicity here as well. You'll understand this synchronicity more as well if you listen to my two previous videos, which I'll put on the screen now. As a child, I was completely without worries and anxieties. I just lived. And this surely was one of the main reasons I did it so instinctively, without a care in the world. I didn't question it. It was like second nature shifting between the astral and the physical with complete ease. As a child, I didn't think about time in our usual linear sense. I don't know if that's just me. Let me know if you feel if that was you too. Uh, you know, as a kid, I didn't really develop my intellect fully till I was a teenager. And I was quite a quiet and strange kid, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, you know, just coming in and out of body so easily like that and just enjoying it uh, like a playful child. Uh, it's like I've always said, you know, if I taught a group of 100 adults and another group of 100 children, the children are always going to have much higher success rates than the children, guaranteed. So this is the first time I've ever remembered anything like this. I've never intentionally tried to remember anything from my past or past lives as of yet or anything like that. Uh, it happened just so naturally and spontaneously after I asked that question in the astral. And although I was initially shocked that in fact... I did astral project as a child, uh, on reflection, I'm not actually that surprised that I did it because it just doesn't surprise me that, you know, children can do this more naturally. I've spoke about this in my book too. But however, I was more surprised and still am at the peculiar sensation and fact that I remembered something from a long time ago that I wouldn't usually be able to. 
And I guess that's the sensation of recalling a kind of inner Akashic record of my own life rather than an ordinary physical memory. And so I certainly went back to work this week with what I energetically learned from my guide and also from what I learned from myself as a child to be lighthearted, at ease, to be more playful and joyful and not take things too seriously. And of course, all of this really helped me come to terms with all this stress that I've been having lately. Oh, and I just want to add, I had this experience the day after I got the COVID vaccine. Uh, I just want to say that because I've noticed an increasing number of fair few fear mongers trying to spread misinformation that the vaccines somehow stop people from astral projecting or something, which is, you know, just a bunch of nonsense, of course. Uh, And just to finish off on a more profound note and conclude what I learned, you know, a young and fresh mind is one that is without conflict. It is the arising of conflict which sprouts duality within us. And of course, this conflict, and especially spiritual conflict, is common to manifest when practicing things like astral projection. And, you know, most children are mostly free from conflict, whether it's conflict of the material, spiritual, belief systems, uh, relationships. You know, they have no identifications of being spiritual or good or bad at this or that, or have predispositions about such and such a thing. And this is the more innocent state of consciousness that we have to go back into. I'm reminded of the Hindu term Leela, which is the Sanskrit word for play, and also implies spontaneity, which in essence means all form or everything that is, including the universe and God or gods and consciousness, is a sort of divine play. And this word Leela can even be interpreted as God is a force that is like a playful child, creating and destroying freely and joyously. And so if we want to realize this kind of divine reality within our own nature, we have to understand this aspect of personal freedom and divine creativity and playfulness. Uh, I'll leave a couple of links below about it. There's a famous talk from Alan Watts as well about the playfulness of gods and what it means to exist. So there's a link for that in the description below. Well, thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode and experience. I certainly did and I'm still processing the fact that I astral projected as a child and the fact that I was able to recall such a far off memory. Uh, Perhaps I should try to recall things from even earlier before this life I'm in. Who knows? But I'm sure that time will come when it's meant to. This is Jean. You're listening to Astral Doorway, and I'll see you on the next episode.